video, I'm going to debunk the nonsense about cars. The good, the bad, and the ugly. There's lots of information swirling on the internet these days about carbohydrate, and I want to clear up some of the confusion. So you're hearing some experts talking about eat slow carbs, and you have some experts saying don't eat any carbs. The reality is there is no one size fits all for everyone. It really depends on your metabolic makeup, your activity level, and let me go into that a little further here. Why would it matter? What's the difference? Well, the quote unquote good carbs are what we call slow carbs or low glycemic carbs. That's how they're often referred to. And what this means is these are types of carbohydrates that cause a slower rise in your blood sugar. And so they're viewed better because they're not causing your blood sugar to spike. However, that's not the whole story. These carbs sometimes are referred to as low glycemic, a glycemic index of 55 or less, but a glycemic index that's low can still give you a blood sugar problem. So an example might be oatmeal. Oatmeal is viewed as healthy and the king of the crop for carbs and we should all eat oatmeal for breakfast. But for many people, that is too much carbohydrate and it may raise their blood sugar. So just because it's low glycemic index doesn't necessarily mean it's good for everyone. If there's a person who's dealing with high blood sugars or looking to lose weight, these are individuals that might need to reduce their carbohydrate exposure. On the other hand, if you're a very active adult, you might be able to handle more carbohydrates. So if you're a, uh, a gym buff, you know, you're more metabolically active, you can handle more carbohydrate and you might not have to be watching these amounts so much. Hey Lisa, tell me what to do. All right, here's this week's TMWTD. Everything needs to be individualized. There is no perfect fit diet, and I hate using that word diet, but you know what I mean. There's no one diet for everyone. Another tip that you could use to know how much carbohydrate you can tolerate, in other words, what is your carbohydrate tolerance, is doing a simple blood sugar test. A simple blood sugar monitoring machine is a great tool to get to the root of the carbohydrate issue. So what you do is you grab a blood sugar meter. It's at your local pharmacy. There's many brands. You can go to any local place and pick up the one that you choose and do a blood sugar test. So check your blood sugar before you eat and check it after you eat. And ideally, I would encourage you to check it an hour after, not the two hours that's often recommended because an hour after is your peak blood sugar. So if you have a shift in your blood sugar, 30, 40, 50 points, you know that you're having some blood sugar effect of that food. Also, a normal blood sugar would be to keep your blood sugar 99 to in the 70 range. So for example, under 70 is technically a low blood sugar. So if you start out at a meal and your blood sugar is 150, you know already you have a higher blood sugar. So the last thing you wanna do is be eating more carbohydrate to raise your blood sugar even higher. So a blood sugar test is a really vital tool that you can use to, again, to check your blood sugar before a meal and an hour after a meal. Know what those numbers are, know what the normal numbers are, know how much your blood sugar is going up, and that, my friends, is gonna be a way to determine your carbohydrate sensitivity. If you found this information valuable, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with your friends on Facebook. And if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel so you'll never miss an upcoming episode of Your Tasty Life TV.